Okay, so let's talk about Frozen Heim. This game was in early access for I think about a year or so, and June 16th, 2022, it finally released in version 1.0. So this is the version we're checking out. There was like a hotfix or two that did some couple things, but basically this game is a RTS strategy base building 4X game. Think Civilization. Warcraft, Starcraft, you can play single player with pausing in multiple different speeds or you can play multiplayer which I assume it's just straight RTS playing at the normal speed. So what is this game? How does it play? Is it going to be worth your time and money? Pretty much right off the bat from what I've played so far, this game's only $20 and I think it's worth the money. Definitely worth the money. Twenty dollars. That's like an easy pickup for this type of game with the uh, the quality that I'm seeing and the amount of content here. With that being said, there's a couple of weird, odd things I do want to talk about. But before we get into that, if you're watching on YouTube, please come by Twitch. This is where I'm uh, live streaming this review and where we play the game. And if you want to see the uh, let's play, there's a link down below to the let's play channel. Right now, though, there's like 2,000 reviews, mostly positive, but since the game has been released in version 1.0, there has been mixed reviews, but I do not want to go read that just yet. I don't want to uh, skew my opinion of the game. So, it was developed by Paranoid Interactive and published by Hyper Strange. I want to thank them for the review copy. However, all thoughts will be my own. Single player, online PvP, and there is co-op. So, the game has a couple of different modes here. There is a story mode that takes you between... Pretty much a couple of different acts, like five different acts across some different sorts of clans, basically doing missions and, you know, just basic story points. Then you have the uh, the skirmish mode, which is the pretty much exhibition mode where you can configure a map to play with other AIs. Um, so there's like nine or so maps at the launch here, and they are handcrafted maps. So a lot of them are either small maps, medium or large maps for, you know, two, pe two people, four, six, up to eight people. You can have teams, 1v1, 1v3, 4v4, or eight-man free-for-all, etc. And basically, the only way to win is to destroy their basic home houses or do something called Unleash Ragnarok, which is basically calling upon the gods to smite your opponents. But that being, like, that particular one, it requires you to go around the map and and take over these sort of points of interest called rune stones and so like if it's it's kind of balanced that way where you have to kind of expand somewhat you can't just turtle the whole game and get strong because the other players might be unleashing ragnarok and you just get completely killed so the game like i said it's an rts expanding game where basically you start with a small little base and this is all viking stuff with a little bit of mythology here because you get like special powers and perks depending on the god that you worship so um i did mention the story mode let's just talk about how a basic skirmish mode goes so this game doesn't have like an insane amount of buildings but there are a lot of different ideas here that kind of work together so you have your basic production buildings you have like wood you have stone you have steel bog iron and then you're gonna start doing like food and animal um what's it called hunting hunting for all that good stuff let's see here hunt oh yeah forage hunt fish grow your food keep your clan as safe as the seasons pass so th there is quite a lots of mechanics here but basically like if you've played any of those games it's it's exactly the same thing you have to manage a bunch of resources you have to keep gathering them you have to build units and you have to go out i think what makes this game really fun and stands out is the different sorts of builds you can do because you don't just choose a clan as soon as you start the game, everyone starts with the basic stuff and you have to, you know, you, you start with the scout, you start with the building and you start with a couple of resources. You expand, you run out. And then once you get your building to tier two via, you know, doing a lot of requirements, you can go ahead and build the guild hall. And that's when you choose your build. And I'm assuming everyone can choose because like if you have eight people, there's only like four or five different types of clans. Anyone can choose that. And they are they all have their own pros and cons. Some are good with defending fighting foraging food pr pr you know production etc so i think that's pretty clever um the game has a like the game for the most part like if you're playing a skirmish map there is a lot of resource management it plays like a, a single player simulator game until like maybe half an hour 45 minutes unless you rush the enemies then you're going to start fighting them so you have a lot a ton of setup so this game really requires you to you know 
it's, it's an RTS, so every second counts. If you are playing multiplayer, you have to be very familiar with the game. Otherwise, you are just wasting so much time. It's just, well, it's just one of those types of games. But if you are playing single player, luckily you can pause. But even during the pause, I, I kind of got wrecked by a medium um, opponent. But that's because I didn't know what to do. I was just testing all the different waters out. You know, trying to craft every single building, not specializing into any little things. So the game's um, not bad. There, there is more stuff than skirmish mode. There is a city building mode, which is almost like a sandbox thing where you just have some fun and just build around without too many um, sort of things attacking you. And then there is another thing called the uh, survival mode, which is pretty interesting, where you can, you can actually play yourself single player or team up with uh, one of your friends online. And what you can do is you have to survive waves and waves of enemies. This is also very configured. So you can have an unlimited wave, so survive as long as you can, or have a certain amount of waves, I think up to 25, so you can actually have an end game. And basically, it's pretty much the, the same thing as a skirmish map. You choose one of the maps, so you can choose like a, the small one up to a large one. And then you just survive Every, at you know different intervals. You will be attacked, so you have to make sure you have the bases built up and stuff. I think that's a pretty cool idea. They do have something in the um, skirmish mode, the skirmish maps called experimental map generation. Um, this is interesting. I really like the idea. However, when I tried generating a map, it was really really bad. Um, it was just unbalanced as hell. The terrain was not good, and basically there was just not enough resources around. I ran around the whole map and. There was like almost nothing but the occasional wolf den or a bear or a um, a village there. But there was no like extra resources for you to get. There's no, you know, things you can grab on the ground. Maybe it was just a bad generator. But then again, it's experimental. So I guess you, I, I wouldn't recommend that. The um, preset maps, they're pretty good and balanced overall. I do uh, recommend those. Okay, so. Uh, 21 story missions, blah, 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 competitive player. Um, when I did try to look up multiplayer online, there was no servers. Right now, the game should be like at the peak of its height of player base because it just came out within a week. But there was no like online servers. There is a matchmaking button, but I did not want to click that because I did not, I, I'm not, I did not play the game yet. So I didn't want to just jump in. Um, let's see. You can, you, okay, there's a photo mode, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm interested in seeing some of the reviews online, so let's go over. See why it is mixed. Okay. Four hours. Advanced complex of Halo Wars. Nice. 17 hours. I said nice. Oh, six hours. Terrible pathing, finding ruins. Units are comprised of 46 soldiers. One of them gets stuck. I do have to agree. So some of them were like a little weird. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the pathing was a little weird. Some enemies did, look, you know, do that. 5 out of 10, this guy says. Bad resource management, shallow depth, makes it pretty mediocre. It's not a bad game. I do have to agree. It's like a... It's like run-of-the-mill sort of things that you've seen. You know, Warcraft, Starcraft stuff. Nothing really makes it stand out. It's just basic medieval Viking units. So, meh. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. This guy has 5 hours in. Not a city builder. Many have pointed out it's a decent base-building RTS. Exactly. It's decent. It's decent. It's like they, they took elements of a lot of really successful games and just put it together here but it feels like a, a little you know thinly spread uh this guy has 1.8 hours no 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 uh let's go okay seven eight hours this guy has a bad review on it uh oh here we go i waited several months to play the official release i'm disappointed it looks like there were several ideas city building and a resource management is very basic rts elements are standard nothing stands out Exploration, very lackluster. Storytelling is quite bad. <laughs> uh, one thing I did like is the music. Yeah, the music and the, there's a little bit of voice lines and stuff. This guy has 74 hours. Let's look at this one, though. Great game. AI should be tuned much better. More of a challenge. This guy's hella good at the game. Multiplayer is a ton of fun. Yeah, I feel like the AI is probably not that great. You're probably going to have the best time here either playing with a friend or I guess if you're super competitive, go online. But I feel like this is one of those games that it's not that widespread played. So you're not going to have a good range of newbies and hardcore players. I feel like you're going to find medium to hardcore at all times with this game. Uh, let's see. What, what else does this guy says? Um, Civ series, Banish, Timberborn. That's a good game, Timberborn. College Remanagement, RTS Together. So it's like it's good, but I feel like it's very, very basic. But yeah, it's a uh, like I said at the very very start of the video, twenty dollars for this game and the quality. You're gonna have a fun time here if you like these sort of games. You, there's a good amount of replayability just because you can go with different builds. You can go lots of different maps, different teams, 
you know you can even challenge yourself maybe 1v2 or something like that it's it's nice and maybe once they really get down the procedurally generated maps this game will have endless replayability for those who like these types of things but yeah it's uh it's pretty good so if you guys enjoyed leave a like it helps a lot if you haven't already subscribed for daily videos come by twitch where all this is being reviewed even the live uh, in the live review and head on over to the youtube main youtube for the review this is the review the the let's play channel for the uh let's play thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time bye